Okay. We're here with uh, Anthony Michael Albini, and uh, um, the date is March 4th, 2012, and we're at Mr. Albini's home in Southington, Connecticut, uh, doing the interview. Uh, Mr. Albini was a World War II vet. His uh, branch of service was the U.S. Army Signal Corps. His highest rank received was uh, Tech 4, uh, and his uh, date of service was October 9, 1941 to September 9, 1945. Um, and uh, Mr. Albini, help us out. Where did you? Uh, where were you originally based out of? What? Uh, where were you trained? Fort Monmouth. Fort Monmouth, uh, Rhode Island? New no, no, oh. Fort Monmouth, New Jersey. That was a signal corps school. Okay, very good. Uh, and, and they sent me to a radio school there, a, a Morse code. So I had to learn Morse code. All right. And um, we're here with uh, John DeMello. He's the camera operator and myself, Ken DeMauro. I'm uh, with the Southington Historical Society and we're doing the project for the Southington Historical Society in cooperation with the uh, Veterans History Project in the Library of Congress. So, so basically, um, we're going to be talking to Mr. Albini about his experiences during World War II and uh, see how it goes. A little bit because we had some technical difficulties and uh, um, we're going to cover some information possibly over again uh, to get a running start. Uh, uh, we're talking about uh, uh, Tony's uh, uh, training at, at Fort Devens and then no, uh, inducted at Fort induct, Devens, inducted at, and trained went at to Fort uh, New Jersey mm -hmm. and then uh, was being sent overseas right. to uh, Melbourne, Australia. And we were talking about uh, he was being transported uh, by uh, troop ship to uh, to Melbourne, and we were talking about Pearl Harbor. I'm sorry, um, Pearl Harbor. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, when you had heard about Pearl Harbor. Well, we were at Fort Monmouth. They got us out in the morning, early in the morning, and um, and they announced that they as Japanese had bombed Pearl Harbor. That's mm -hmm. all we knew, you know, but. It didn't mean much to us, you know. Mm -hmm. so you were already because, in, huh? and the war the war had already began in Europe. So uh, uh, I think we had already. Oh yeah, and Europe was going on. Yeah, sure. It started in September started, of '39, yeah. I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, then, uh, like I said, it didn't hit us that bad because we had no idea about war, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, we didn't know the damage they had done either, you know. How old were you at the time? You twenty one. Twenty-one. Yeah. Oh wow, we're young. Um, uh, the regiment, the traveling, the going through. I take it you went through the Panama Canal right. on the trip. Right. Right. Uh, uh, was it pretty easy traveling, or was it uh, was it a lot of seasickness, or? No, I think it's, there were some that got seasick. Fortunately, I didn't. But like I said before, I don't know if it's on there or not. Uh, we were getting two meals a day and one canteen of water had to last you 24 hours. Yeah. And uh, we landed in Melbourne, Australia, and a few days later they shipped us out. Most of us sh were shipped out to New Caledonia. Were you stationed anywhere close to Australia, like a, like a base or a, we, were, uh, we were in a camp. Okay. Evidently they had put up this camp for us uh, in, in a park in Australia called Camp Royal Park. Now, was it just Americans there, or were there? Yeah, just uh, Americans. Okay. Yeah, as far as I know, yeah. Um, did you have any association with the Australian uh, nationals, or? Yeah. Oh, they were wonderful to us. You know, when we were the first ones that landed there, and uh, they had never seen uh, strangers. You know, <laughs> so they took us right in. You know, um, very, very friendly. Invited us in there. Now, what is like? What is like English? Uh, yeah, they spoke English, of course, okay. with, a, with, a, with a British accent. Okay. Yeah. And uh, from what I gather, they didn't like the British very much, so... <laughs> yeah, they had their problems. Um, but they seemed to get along pretty well with the Americans, didn't they? Oh, yes, we did, yeah. We, we got along very well, yeah. Um, 
tell me a little bit about some of the different uh, things you saw when you were over there. Um, maybe you could list uh, just in passing, and we can go into detail about some of the uh, some of the uh, maybe the actions that you saw or, or, or battles that I know you you listed. Uh, uh, Guadalcanal yeah. and uh, and some of the other things. Yeah, well, Guadalcanal was our first uh, experience in war. And you see, the Marines invaded Guadalcanal. Then um, they called some of the soldiers, army soldiers from New Caledonia, to reinforce the Marines. And they started a little bit of time, and then the whole division went in to, to take over the uh, action on Guadalcanal until, until we beat them. Um, I don't know if people out there realize what went on or whatever. Uh, um, how, how was it for you? Uh, Ronald Canal? Yeah. Oh, it was a horrible place. Yeah, that's right. uh, it was full of... Uh, the, <laughs> some of the soldiers picked up what they call jungle rot, yellow fever, malaria. I, I was one of them with malaria. Mm -hmm. uh, I came down with malaria later on. Uh, see, after the action was over, when the island was secured, our whole division was sent to F the Fiji Islands for what they call R&R, &R, rest and relaxation. Mm -hmm. And we were supposed to be there just a few months until the, they re-equipped the division, uh, got new replacements for the ones that were killed or sick. But we wound up staying there for nine months because <laughs> they kept getting, getting sick. Hmm. So, uh, our next action was Bougainville, also in the Solomon Islands, also helping out the Marines hmm. on Bougainville. And uh, we were there for a whole year almost on Bougainville. Wow. Uh, then we were sent to uh, the Philippine Islands. Uh, we were sent to Leyte, which had already been taken over by our army, by the United States. But they sent us in for what they called the um, clean up operations, you know. And uh, we stayed there for a while. And then my division was sent to Cebu Island. Mm -hmm. We invaded that island, which is, you know, considered the, the Sol landing. Mm -hmm. Because you invade the the, the the island, you know. Now were the Japanese already there, or? Oh yes, yes, okay. they were there. They had burned the island. Well, first of all, don't forget, we had bombed the islands before we started to go after them, and um, then they set the island. Well, the the big cities they set on the fire before they they retreated into the hills. So when we landed, there was hardly anything there. All, all of the buildings were knocked down. Uh, the people had also uh, gone hiding. So then when we landed, it was, you know, it took a while before we um, got started getting acquainted with the uh, Philippines, with the Filipinos. And, and most of them sp spoke English. Now, what did you do day, day to day being a radio operator? What well, we had set up a, a communication center that we were just, in other words, I was in the, what they call headquarters, uh, division headquarters. And we were in touch with field uh, operators, you know, like the, the infantry. We were in touch with them. And we were giving them, giving them messages. messages and, and, taking and they messages sent us from messages back from, from the front lines. Now, you were in a lot of danger because well, of course, yeah. obviously if the enemy wanted to uh, end the communications, they would want to take out your position, right? Right. Oh, yes. So oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, you were in, in, in grave danger. I mean, not that you weren't in danger before, but uh, uh, exceedingly so. Yeah. Oh, yes. Well, we were the same on Guadalcanal. We were communication yep. for the, for the uh, front lines, yep. so to speak. And also with back to higher headquarters. See, we were in contact with different uh, area uh, units. Mm -hmm. See, like we were in touch, to talk, in touch with the MacArthur headquarters in Australia yeah. oh, wow. also. See, because we had to send reports into them. What kind of emotions did you go through at the time, uh, the, the year before you had been 
in Connecticut and, and had some training in, in Massachusetts and, uh, uh, and New Jersey. Yeah. And now here you were in probably the, and I don't want to make this sound stupid, but uh, the biggest battle of your life. You know, I mean, uh, uh, what kind of emotions were you going through? Well, we were, we were, you know, at that time we were getting bombed. Yeah. Artillery pieces would come over. In fact, I'll show you after. I have shrapnel from uh, from one of the things that I took. It fell on my, on my you know, the, I know, you guys had them in, in Vietnam, the tank, uh, tents where six people were sleeping under there. No, you know, we had, oh, we had the uh, two-man tents. Okay, well, we had those two, but this, anyway, when I got, we were in a fox, we went to a foxhole. When I got back, I found these shrapnel pieces from a, from an artillery shell on, mm -hmm. on my area where I slept. But I'm saying what what I'm trying to say is uh, nothing prepares you for that when no. you first get bombed or get yeah. shot yeah. at or oh, something he, like that. Probably a lot of emotions, your adrenaline pumps. Of course, pumps, of course. Your, everybody's your, scared. Your heart, you, you get scared, you yes. get angry. Yes. You know, I mean, yes. So you you went yes. through all that stuff. Oh right? yes, uh -huh. yes. Yes. How did you uh, How did you pass the time? How did you? Uh... Well, <laughs> you know, I don't even remember. Play cards a little bit, did, stuff like that. You know. And did and your job. Me personally, I was attached to the infantry two two separate times, up in the front lines. Although I did not fight, I was still in communication. But <clears throat> they sent some of us from the from the signal company to the front lines, uh, like the. Uh, uh, for an example, the 100, I was with the 164th Infantry uh, and I was with the 132nd Infantry. Those are regiments. Mm -hmm. See, back in those days they called them regiments, mm -hmm. which involves, I think, about 3,000 people or so. 3,000 soldiers. Tell us about some of your friends in your outfit and uh, people you got to know. Some of your friends. Yeah, people. well, they were, you become friends because you sleep together, you work together, you eat together, you do everything together. So those are your closest friends, you know, and, and you're together for, for 42 months I was, I was overseas. Um, you become like a family sure. with those people, you know. So yeah. you get to know them, you argue oh, yeah. with them. You, yes, yes. Uh, Good times and bad times. Right, good times and bad times. You get you get to know about their families, their girlfriends, their wives that they were married. Now, were you married at the time? No, no. Okay. No, I was single. When did you When did you get married? In 1948. Okay, so after the war. Oh yes. And we'll talk a little bit about that too. Yeah. Um, how did you stay in touch with your family? Uh, well, we wrote as much as we could, um, and they come out with this. Uh, V-mail, they called it. It was just a form, a form, form just about the size of this uh, paper here. And they called it V-mail. It was. I, I really don't know how they transmitted that. They must have transmitted that to, to, to uh, radio, because it was so fast and going back and forth. Now, did you hear from your family? And, and obviously, the times were different back then. And there were certain things that they wanted people to know, and certain things that they. Did they uh, did they edit the mail? Yes. They did. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you could you could not speak about anything about the war or where you were. You couldn't say where you were. Okay. And if you wrote anything they didn't like, they would cut it out on you. Or black it out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They would cut it right out. Yeah. Cut it right out. Um, were you allowed to make phone calls or anything? No. Like that? There was no. no phone just no. just just wrote. Yeah. Okay. And did you get letters back from your family? Well, not see the ones in Italy. I couldn't write to them. Yeah. It was only a uh, whore in the state. Well, that's why I met, yeah. Yeah. In other words, I was in touch with my father and, and, and relatives in Torrey that I lived with earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was only in touch with them. But with, the, with the family in Italy, they didn't know where I was, or whether I was still alive or there. They didn't know that. Now, you mentioned earlier about playing cards. What else did you do when you were not, not resting, but uh, uh, downtime? Well, they, you know, like if it was. It wasn't too dangerous. Uh, they, we played uh, baseball. That's about all. They would have make up baseball teams in the, in the Any office. movies at the? Uh... Well, they used to have movies at night, if, if possible. You know what I mean? Yep. In certain areas, in in their area areas, they would set up a tent for uh, uh, I mean a screen for 
for movies. Any particular movies you you remember or, or did it kind of all you blend know, together? You know, I don't, I don't even hardly remember. The only one I remember was uh, Lena Horne uh, made a movie, but I do not recall. Do you know who it was? It wasn't Cabin in the Sky, was it? Cabin in the Sky? I believe so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. With uh, uh, Eddie Rochester Anderson and Lena yeah, uh, Horne. So. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think and, so. Yeah, I think so. And Ethel Waters. Yeah, possibly. I don't remember all everybody. African American. But do you know why I remember Lena Horne? Because uh, I used to like a I used to like dancing before uh -huh. the war. Dancing was very popular in those days, yeah. and the big bands were very popular in those days. Yes. And and she started to sing with Charlie Barnett, and I had seen her because we went to dance at, at a place in Bridgeport where Charlie Barnett was playing, and Lena Horne sang there. Oh wow! And I, and that's how it came to mind to me that it was Lena Horne that was in the movie that we so saw. So you were always a big fan of hers. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Yeah. And she was, she was very pretty too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, uh, besides cards and movies, did you see any like uh, USO shows? To, to no, they, they, they didn't have much of that going on over there. Although some of the stars came out there to put on shows like Bob Hope, he came over there. Uh, I don't remember everybody that came with uh, I don't remember some of the ladies that came with him. But they would, if possible, they would put on a show in their areas, not in the front lines, of course, you know. Sure. John just informed me that because of the technical difficulties earlier uh, with the camera card, uh, I have to go over again uh, Tony's uh, biographical information, which should have been it towards the beginning. Um, I did want to mention, uh, he mentioned something very interesting about his name, uh, that uh, his name uh, was, I'll let you explain it because you explained it so well. well. My, uh, my name is Albini. Yep. Spelled with an I. Uh, A L B I N I. Right. Uh, during my uh, induction into the army, somehow it became Albino. Yeah. And there are some people named Albino, but mine is Albini. Yeah. So I never corrected that. <laughs> so when I got out of the service, I kept using my name as Albini instead of Albino. Yes. But all my re army records have Albino on there. That's very interesting. Yeah. And your birth date is May 6, 1920. Right. Uh, and you were born in? Italy, Ponte Landolfo, uh, um, province of Benevento, Italy. Which is uh, a Sorry. province that's related to Waterbury, right, in, in a certain way? Uh, uh, because we have, a, we have a Ponte club, which called Ponte Landolfo. For short, it's called Ponte. They have a, a big, big club in Waterbury, which is known as the Ponte club. And uh, they have a, a, a lot, a of, lot of uh, people from Ponte Landolfo that have uh, come to the United States, yeah. and they live in Waterbury. I don't know why. For some reason, I I assume that relatives call other relatives, yeah. and they all went to Waterbury. Quickly again, uh, go over the names of your uh, mother and father. And uh, my father's name was Pietro. Peter. Peter. My mother's name was Ju Giuseppina, with Josephine. And uh, her last name was also Albini. Okay. And yeah. I have a sister named Carmela and a brother named Angelo. And they're still with us. They're, they live in Waterbury, yes. Yeah. Uh, and neither was in the service? No. Okay. And um, let's insert some of your uh, uh, information as well. Um, uh, you got married when? 1948. After August the war. 1948. And, and who did you marry? Uh, her name is also Josephine. Okay. Her last name is Rinaldi. Rinaldi? Yeah. Like the pizza place? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of Rinaldis around, yeah, yeah. And, and the funny thing is, she's also from my town in Italy, Porto yes. Landolfo, because she came here after the war. Her father was here, she was in Italy with Did her Did your mother. families know each other, or? Y yes, yes, okay. yes. Because there was a lot of, like, uh, my family as well, uh, uh, there were, I don't want to say arranged, yeah, arranged marriages and yes, stuff like yeah. that. Well, right. mine wasn't. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm eight years older than she is, and I, uh, I knew the family. For some reason, my father and her father bought a home 
next to each other in Waterbury. So at the time I was living in Hartford. Then my, when my father bought the house, the rest of the family had come over. Okay. And uh, so I moved back to Waterbury. I moved back to Waterbury because I, I figured I might as well live with the family. And how many children did you have? Uh, just two daughters. Two daughters? Yeah. Uh, first names? Uh, Lisa is the first one, okay. and Joanne is the second one. And grandchildren? Uh, we, have, we only have three grandchildren. That's good. Uh, Lisa has a boy and a girl named Aaron and Elizabeth, and uh, Joanne has one daughter named Gina. Very interesting. Um, and you said that before the war you were, uh, you were set up to uh, work as either a photographer's assistant or a photographer. Well, I became a photographer oh, okay. eventually. I opened my own business in Waterbury uh -huh. after I got married. And you worked for uh, the Rubin? Rubens. Rubens. They called uh, the studio in, in uh, uh, Torrington, they called the Rubens. But they had also branched out. They, they had opened a, a studio in Hartford uh, and uh, they uh, bought one in Bristol. So they had branched out. And I was doing the darkroom work for them, also some photography, but mostly dark darkroom work. How long did you do photography work? All my life, oh, well, well, ever since I come out of the army again, you okay. know. Yeah. Then I opened in 1956. I opened my own studio in Waterbury, hmm. and we were there 29 years. My wife worked in the studio with me in the oh, office, wow. and I did weddings and uh, uh, school special events. Yeah, school all, pictures. All, yeah, 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 yeah. The whole works. Yeah. Um, pause for a second. We're going to switch gears uh, back to uh, uh, the South Pacific and, and the war effort there uh, because we were covering some of the biographical information that had been lost when uh, we have some technical dif difficulties because of the uh, camera card. Um, I do want to uh, ask Tony about, uh, about some of the day-to-day -day stuff that went on uh, when you were stationed in uh, in the South Pacific, the different areas or whatever. Um, uh, you said that you played cards and you uh, saw some movies or whatever. Uh, how about, ra was there radio? Well, we had army uh, radios, yeah. Army radio. not, not everybody had them, but I mean, okay. we did. Because we were in the single corps, we were, uh, you know, uh, in... Uh, a lot of people smoked back then, too. Oh, everybody, was almost everybody smoked, oh, yes. Because there was a lot we used, to do. We used to give free cigarettes, that's one thing. <laughs> yeah. And once in a while they even give us some beer. Yeah. Even um, though it was hot out there, but they would give us some beer, you know. <laughs> so, uh, from day to day, you said you spent uh, uh, 42 months yeah, in the Pacific, out, yeah. out there? Yeah. Um, when did you hear about the end of the war? Uh, well, I had already been chosen to be. Uh, relieved of, in fact, I was relieved of duty. I was sent back to, from Cebu Island, I was back uh, to Lady Island to be shipped back to the United States and to be equipped with new uh, uniform, stuff like that. So then one night we were watching a movie and all of a sudden they stopped the movie and they said, we have bombed, no, the, uh, we have bombed um, Nagasaki. Nagasaki, yeah. And uh, no, Hiroshima. Hiroshima. It was the first one, yeah. We, we had bombed Hiroshima. And then uh, they bombed uh, Nagasaki three day, two or three days later. But and, the war and, in Europe was already over at that point. Yeah, that was already over then, yeah. So then, see, we were already set to go into, um, to invade Japan proper. But I had already been relieved of duty because I was already coming back. Now, did you guys expect uh, there was talk in, in, in people expected, uh, other than hearing about the atomic bombs, that the war effort was going to go on for another couple of years. Oh, yes. Yeah. See, we were supposed to invade Japan proper, mm -hmm. and they had figured that there was going to be, in the original landings, there were going to be a million casualties. Oh, my. Now, I, I assume that would have been both sides. I, I don't know, but that's what they used to say. There's going to be a mi million casualties if we had to invade the... Uh, uh, Japan proper. Wow. Um, so, when you finally learned of the actual end of the war, the what they used to call V V 
VJ, VJ Day, Day. Yeah, VJ uh, Day. Where were you? In 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 Lady on Lady Island in the Philippines. And that was when they stopped the movie and they stopped the movie. They announced that the Japanese had surrendered. Um, were you? Was there cheers? Yes, there was cheers, and there were ships. As far as your eyes could see in the harbor, because like I said, our next step was to invade Japan proper, and they were getting ready. Oh wow! So the ships were out there. They opened, they started to open fire, <laughs> shooting oh. shooting off their guns and. Uh, in celebration. Was, yeah, celebration, of course. It was, it, was, it was like a weird thing, you know, to us. You don't know what to make of it, you know, because you're just a poor soldier there. You're yeah. sitting around and, and see what the hell is going on, you know? Excuse my language. I take it so, there was a great amount of relief, too. Oh, right? of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, then that's it. The war is over for me. A couple, a couple of days later, I, we were put on a troop ship and we came back to the United States. And I, we landed in, uh, we, went, we went under the... Uh, Bridge there, the Golden Gate. Uh, the Golden Gate. Uh, an army camp in California. We we went there, about, you know, the group that was on the ship, and we were uh, of course divided up. And I was sent to Fort Monmouth, New Jersey. Again. Uh, well, this not Fort Monmouth. Sorry, Fort Dix, New Jersey. Okay. I went there. A couple of days later, I was discharged, and that was the end of, from, of the, the service for me. Let me back up a little bit. I know I mentioned this in the passing, but I don't know if it got uh, uh, cut because of the problems. Uh, your friends when you were in the service, you, you mentioned some people that you knew. And whatever. Yes. Can, can you mention some by specific name? Or oh, yes, yes. My closest friend, friend was, his name was Robert Granoff. Okay. He was my best friend there in, in, uh, for the fo two, 42 months that I was... Over there, we were together for, for that long. And then another guy, his name was Kermit Trout. Uh -huh. He was another friend of ours. And then there were others, like the guy named uh, um, Max Morgan, Maxwell Morgan, uh, uh, Patsy Smoke. Now, I have to tell you about that guy. Uh -huh. I said, he was Italian. I said, Don't buy, if you're Italian, why is your name Smoke? He says, well, he says, when my family come over, <laughs> their last name was Chiminera. Uh -huh. You know what that is? Chimney. Oh. <laughs> so, so they changed their name to Smoke. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was strange, you know. <laughs> um. Yeah, but there were a lot of, lot of guys that uh, you're friends with because you're in the outfit for two, 42 months together. And uh, 150 guys in, in, in the single company. Now, when you're... Were, you, were most of your friends Italian Americans or Italians or, or? There were some Italians, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but not not Italians from across. Okay. Yeah. I think I was yeah, the only one there that was from across. Yeah. Um, okay. How about uh, uh, after you got out? Did you keep in touch with with a lot of these people? Yeah, with with a couple of them, yeah, yeah. That's good. We're, we're in touch, yeah. Occasionally. And you yeah. said that most have passed away now, huh? Yeah. All of, all yeah. of my close friends, they're all gone. And you said that you were older, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like one of the guys was 18. And yeah, my closest friend was 18 years old when he joined up. So he was three years younger than I was, but he right. died a couple of years ago. Yeah. I can't even imagine that. Uh, these, are, these are kids. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Going out and... And, and, he, and he, like I said, he joined even before the war because he was already in yeah. uh, when Pearl Harbor happened. Yeah. He got out of high school and joined the, the, the army. He had a brother that had joined... Uh, uh, the Air Force, I think it was in the Air Force, but I, I didn't know him. Now, when you came back to the United States, yeah. uh, uh, what type of reception did you receive uh, by family and oh, friends? Oh, when I came back to the United States, when I got discharged at Fort Dix, I, I, well, in those days, they used barracks bags, huge bag, you threw all your belongings in there. Uh, I, I hopped on a bus and I went to New York City thinking that I was going to spend two or three days there, have a ball, and then go back home. On the second or third night, I was at the Roseland Ballroom. That's a very okay, famous yeah. ballroom. You've heard of it. Yeah. I came down with malaria. Oh, wow. Yeah. So uh, I made it back to the hotel. It was kind of a second-rate hotel, you know. And uh, I went back there, and I went, I, w I went upstairs, and uh, I went to my room. And like I said, I thought I came down with malaria because I was getting the chills. So it was getting worse and worse. So I called the desk. Within 10 minutes, they picked me up, brought me downstairs, threw an ambulance to me, brought me to the Veterans Hospital up in the Bronx, New York. I was there for 10 days. 
-hmm. And finally discharged and went back home. That was the end of it. How about the, uh, I take it your family was happy to see you? Well, my father was, yeah. And, and, the, and of course, I went back to the uh, relatives in Torrington. I went back to live with them. And I went to visit the guy that I used to work for, Ruben's studio. And they, the minute I walk in the door to say hello, he said, oh, we got a job for you in Hartford. Yeah. We opened the branch in Hartford. We, we got a job for you over there. So that's how I got back into business again. Tell me a little bit about the funny story that you told me about what you used to make back when you first started the, when you interned, you made nothing and then oh, you made Oh, six five. months, six months, I didn't get a penny. After six months, I started to get $3 a week. Wow. I was there two years and the guy started to give me $5 a week. So after a while, I left there and I went to Hartford and I got worked in a studio in Hartford for $8 a week. Right. Then um, another guy came along, uh, he was, we used to call him kidnappers, you know, people that used to go from house to house taking pictures. And I used to do developing for him. And he gave me a little bit more. I forgot what he gave me. So then uh, I was there for a while. All of a sudden, he didn't pay me anymore. Uh -huh. And uh, I said, gee, well, you know, what's going on here? So one day I got feet off. I took his camera and I took it with me. I figured uh -huh. I'm going to take his camera. So uh, it was on a Sunday. Two cops come over to where I was living. And they said, uh, you stole the camera. I said, no, but the guy didn't pay me. Well, no, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they took the camera back from me and they brought it back, so I never got paid. Then yeah. I worked, you've heard of Loring Studios, right? Yes. Yeah, I worked for them for a while. Yeah. I got a job there for a while, and then they laid me off. Yeah. And I went back to Waterbury and uh, I went to work in a hat shop in Danbury for a while. And then from there was Labor Day, and I went to visit my relatives at Torrington again to visit them and they suggested one of the girls there one of my cousins suggested going to this studio downtown and, and ask for the job and that's how it, i got back into photography again because he offered me a job in, in hartford and of course you said earlier that uh, you had your own studio for many years well in 1956 i opened my own place then yeah. Yeah. and how long did you uh, have your own studio 29 years oh wow yeah did you do newspaper photography as well or no no, not really, Never. no, no. So just like special events and things? Like yeah, that. yeah. School but otherwise we did school, uh, well, I did a lot of weddings. Christening, schools, yeah, weddings, yeah, engagements. Also and, uh, school, school pictures, you yeah. know, like for the yearbook. Yeah. I, they used to have two uh, nur nursing schools in Waterbury. Waterbury Hospital had one, and St. Mary Hospital, St. Mary's Hospital had one. And I just used to do their yearbook pictures, both schools. And a lot of the uh, high school came to me for senior pictures. Tell me a little bit because you and I have the same uh, uh, opinion of digital. Uh, mm. uh, I don't particularly like digital uh, cameras, uh, being an old newspaper man myself uh, and working with uh, the old time equipment and doing your own photos and stuff yeah. and you probably working with uh, different cameras and mixing your own equipment. Yes, uh, I did that, yes. Uh, you don't particularly like digital either. No, I didn't like it at all. When, when if, well, what happened is that I, when I sold my studio, digital photography would just come in. And I sold it to Art Rich. You know Art Rich? Yeah. Yeah, I sold my studio to him. Yeah. Uh, the, I see, I owned the building. It was, was four different story building. Um, so I sold him the business, not the building. Yeah. And, uh, he was there for about three, four years. Then, I don't know, they didn't like the area and he moved to Watertown. He, he, mm -hmm. I don't know whether he built it. No, he must have bought a, a, an area up there and he had a, his, he moved his business up there. Now he's gone, he's, he's, he's not there anymore. He closed it up. How about the readjustment after you came back? Obviously, uh, you had said that you uh, pretty easily found a job. Uh, uh, how about uh, coming up with your own place to live and, and, and stuff like that? Was that pretty uh, pretty easy or? Yeah, I uh, well when I went to work in Hartford, uh, I worked in a, uh, I lived in a rooming house. Okay. You know, I had a room, and that was it. I used to eat in restaurants uh, every day. You know. And now I was after there you for got married, years. did you? After you got married, did you did you did you rent or did you own? Your no, own no. Home? We we uh, well when we got married, my wife's. Uh, family owned the house and we lived together because she was the only daughter so we lived together okay. then we built a home in another area of Waterbury 
we built a home uh, together, her father and I, and we lived together. Then uh, my father-in-law passed away, and uh, in 1984, when I sold the business, uh, we moved to Southington. Okay. And so I've been here ever since. How do you like Southington? Well, I liked it very much because both my daughters, by the way, both my daughters happened to live in Southington at the time. Uh -huh. So we, did, we decided, well, if we're going to move somewhere, we might as well go down where the girls are. <laughs> so that's what we came down to Southington. Um, I mentioned earlier about your friends and you said that you kept in touch with a couple of them. Yeah. Did, did, you, did you become a mem member of any uh, veterans organizations? Yes, or? yes, yes. Uh, I, I belong to the... Uh, 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 see, my division was called the Americal Division. Uh -huh. It was named while we were in New Caledonia. In fact, one of the guys from my outfit put in that name and it was chosen. Oh, wow. In other words, they had a contest. People could have sent names to, men, to name this division. And this guy sent his na this name in Americal, which meant part of American Caledonia. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. it was chosen. So it was known as the American Division. It was the only division in World War II that didn't have a number. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, American Division. See, this was made from, do remember, when we went across, it was known as Task Force 6814. It was a group of soldiers put together okay. and, and sent across. Um. So the readjustment period uh, was, was, was rather easy for you to come back, um, other than uh, being ill. Um, uh, taking up the photography again, and, yeah. and, and, and getting married, and, and finding a place to live. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, tell me a little bit, uh, by particular name, about some of the veterans organizations. American Legion, Veterans of No, I, don't belong, I didn't belong to any of those. Okay. I belong to the national one, which is known as the uh, American Division. I, oh, the I, American. I, okay. Yeah. Right. Um, make sure. And there, there used to be a group in Waterbury. Um, I forget what the heck they called it. Uh, it was involved with the Italian Americans. Okay. That were in the war, and I joined them. But then they were out of business anyway. Yeah. So uh, I didn't belong to any other. Uh, I belonged to another group. It's called the Guadalcanal. Uh, Veterans Association, I belong to them, I was a life member. They're still in, in operation because I get, uh, uh, every three months I get a, a newsletter from them, you know. When I was a newspaper man many, many years ago, uh, I interviewed this uh, uh, War II uh, vet, and he was a prisoner of war. Oh, yeah. And uh, I asked him, uh, what was the biggest thing that affected him after he got out of the uh -huh. war? And he mentioned that uh, uh, he liked to eat everything <laughs> because he never knew when something was going to happen where he was going to get less or yeah. or get uh, yeah. uh, bad food or whatever. <laughs> uh, uh, so he would eat everything that was given to mm -hmm. him. He would mm -hmm. eat it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, how did being in the war affect you? Did it affect you? In well, it. it Strange because I, I ate everything they threw at me during the the, the, the uh, uh, war, uh -huh. but now I've become very choosy. Okay. My wife cooks, and and there's only certain things that that I eat. A lot of stuff I don't eat anymore. What do you like? Um, Pasta. For an example, I never use butter. I don't drink milk. I don't use any condiments like uh -huh. like uh, ketchup, uh, ketchup, and uh, all that stuff. You know, I don't use that. I don't like it anymore. I don't know why. Oh, but wow. I, I did during the the time I was in the service. How about like sauces and things like that? Uh, well, I would say that my wife cooks primarily Italian style, let's mm -hmm. put it that way, you know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and she's probably a good cook too. Yes, she is, yeah. And she cooks for you, so that makes her a good cook. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> um, um, what kind of life lessons, like, um, um, there was a book written many years ago, and they called the World War II generation mm -hmm. the greatest generation. Right. Uh, right. I think it was written by t t Tom Brokaw, the, the yeah. Best man. Yeah, I uh, remember when he came out with that. I remember uh, that. Yeah, I didn't buy the book, but I do remember. The, uh, 
that people are noting that World War II vets are passing away yeah. more and more and more. Yeah. Uh, and I know you've decided to sit down with us and we're glad that you did. Uh, what are your thoughts about that, uh, getting your stuff down on film for, <coughs> for, 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 for the archives? I, I, I believe it's a great idea, yeah. Yeah, I visited uh, the World War II Memorial in Washington. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you guys have been there, but it's, it's a beautiful... I've been to Washington, but not particularly for that one. Yeah, oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. I, I, I have a picture of it on my computer. I'll, I'll show it to you. Um, it, it, it's amazing what, what they did with that thing. Was it a pretty emotional experience? Yes, you? it was, yeah, yeah. Did you see yeah. uh, people that you knew on the wall? I know. Uh, see, they don't have they don't have names on uh, of the World War II veterans. Okay. Because don't forget, there are 60 million, 16 million yes. of us were in World War II. Um, but they they do have um, well, I don't know what would you call it. Like they have pillars. I'll show you that later. Right. They have pillars with the states on it, they, all around the pavilion. They have Connecticut, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, they have all of the names on there. And, uh, Would you like the way it looked? It yeah, it's a beautiful place, yeah. I went, in fact, I went back again to, to uh, visit it again because I wanted to see more of it. You know, the first time... Did you go with other buddies or did uh, you go No, no, I went, family? I went, yeah, with family, my wife in particular, yeah. Yeah. Good for you. All righty, well, we thank you very much. Is there anything you want to say uh, as kind of a last uh, uh, word, so to speak? Well, I think we've covered just about everything, so I appreciate that you guys took the time out to uh, talk to me. Well, we thank and, you, and we thank yeah, you for your service. Quite welcome. I think Brokaw was right. You guys were the... Yeah. All Can right. I just say one thing? Did you tell him that the military gave you, made a mistake on your last name, and it's Albino, and the rest of the time... Yeah, I explained it, yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. yeah. Uh, we did want to mention uh, that in passing. I know it's in the information, but uh, uh, did you get any special commendations for your work, or...? Oh yeah, I have. Yeah, let me show you guys. Why don't you stop it, John? I want. I want